Hi all and welcome back to another video. So I'm just Kirat and today I'm here to answer a question which I get asked very often and that is how do you proceed from being a BDS dentist in India or Pakistan or any other country or basically having an undergraduate degree in dentistry from your home country to becoming a DDS dentist in the US. So a bit about me. Um, I am just Kirat and I'm currently an advanced standing student at NYU College of Dentistry. So I am pursuing my DDS degree and in two years and with the blessings of God and all of the elders in my family, I think I will be able to have my DDS degree in two years, but currently I'm studying and I'm in the process. Now I get this, uh, this question very often that how do you go from being a BDS dentist to how do you pursue DDS? What is the entire route? And let me tell you, so I did my BDS from India, from Manipal College of Dental Sciences. And uh, after my graduation, uh, I really wanted to pursue DDS, but then I got a very good like fellowship at Ames and I was working there, so I couldn't. But yes, like right after your BDS in India, you can go ahead and straightforward pursue this entire route. So let me tell you what are the requirements and what all do you need to have. First of all, you need to have your BDS degree from your home country. So your degree should be all completed. Now to become a DDS dentist in, in, in US, basically DDS degree and for some schools, the degree is called DMD. So it is the degree that you need to have in order to practice in the US. So for most states in the US, if you are a licensed dentist from India or any other country, you just cannot come to the US and start practicing. You have to go through a full licensure process and that like for that licensure process to practice as a general dentist, you need to go through this pathway and get your DDS degree in the US. Now, what is the duration of the DDS degree? For someone who was born in the US and for someone who start from here, like they don't have a basic a BDS degree from any other country, the pathway is like the entire course takes like four years. But for someone who is already a licensed dentist from a different country, you coming to this country to get your licensure, the DDS degree for you would be either two years or like three years or somewhere in between. And this entire degree, like the one that you get since you are already a dentist from a different country, it's usually called an advanced standing or international dentist pathway. So I am currently, as I told you, pursuing an advanced standing DDS degree at NYU College of Dentistry. So when I graduate, the degree that I will have will be just a regular DDS degree. It's just that I joined via a different pathway. Now, uh, the question is, how do you go from being a BDS dentist to getting your DDS. So firstly, uh, firstly, you need there are like three requirements that you need to have. First requirement is that after your BDS degree, you need to get a course by course evaluation via ECE for all of your transcripts. So for say your GPA in your home country, according to the, your like college standards, you scored like 80% but the u.s schools don't accept that so they ask you to there like there is an organization called ece and the u.s schools ask you to send all of your transcripts to this ece organization and then they go through it and then they evaluate you and then they give you a score out of four so that is your gpa so the schools over here they ask for your gpa which you have to go like get it via this ec evaluation which is the course by course evaluation that is the first thing you need. Second thing that you need is a TOEFL score. TOEFL is just a test that you take to evaluate yourself based on how good you are in English. And uh, so you will get a TOEFL score and you need to have a TOEFL score. It's a bit complicated process, so just bear with me. By the end of this video, I'm very sure if you stick around, you will be able to understand the entire pathway. It is very difficult. It is very complex. But if you want to do it and if you have the passion and the drive to pursue it, you will sort it out, you will figure it out and it will be worth it. It, it is a very rewarding career in the US. So after your EC degree and after your TOEFL, there is another major exam that you need to clear that is called the INBDE. Uh, which is basically, uh, it's an exam related to dentistry. It's a written exam. 
it's a very long exam if you want to know what that exam is and how do you go about it here is another video over here i've just linked it and you can go ahead and watch that other video of mine so you need to clear the inbd exam so one really other important thing that you need to have to be able to pursue this entire pathway is to have a valid us visa which means that you should be able to come to the us now why am i saying that right now because i was mentoring someone the other day i was helping them go over their sop and over their cv and i was trying to give them valuable feedback so they can improve on their application and i realized that that person had to like postpone their inbd exam and cancel and it and like they lost a lot of money because they didn't have a us visa basically basically whenever you want to take your inbd exam make sure before that you have a valid us visa because for this particular person she booked the inbd exam she booked the state she booked like she did everything she was already preparing and meanwhile she had also applied for her us visa like us tourist visa and then her visa got rejected so because of that she was telling me that she had to go through a lot of pain and basically she lost a lot of money and that is not something anyone wants so once you have all of this there is this a portal it's called capit and it's like a centralized portal where all of the schools all of the dental schools in the us who have like certain seats available for international dentists to pursue this licensure pathway they make their seats available over the capit uh, application or like the capit portal so you go to the capit portal and over there you upload your cv your sop and all of your letter of recommendations apart from these three things there is like supplemental application which varies from school to school like some school will ask you to upload something the other school will ask you a question like why do you want to pursue dentistry in our school specifically and so there is a lot of things and after you figure that out and after you're able to fill all of those applications and like you know apply to them after that is when you might or you might not get called for an interview so if you get called for an interview you are lucky and if you ex get accepted to that interview it's then that you get accepted into the school and then you pursue your like licensure pathway i know it's overwhelming i know that but it's it is difficult but it is very rewarding as i said and also like you know every year a lot of people apply to these schools like from what i have heard from schools a lot of people a lot of international dentists apply to multiple schools every year but in total there are only around i think 800 seats available and out of those 800 seats i would say most of the seats are reserved for people who have like a residential status in this country like they are either green card holders or they are citizens so this is something that you need to be aware of because when you are applying on the capit portal make sure that the school that you apply to just go and check if they even accept uh, students who are on like you know a different visa like a tourist visa or who are not residents in the country or who are studying in the country because i have seen people there was someone i was mentoring and then they told me this was their second cycle when i was going you know trying to help them with interview preparation and helping them with their cv and they told me they wasted a lot of money in their first cycle because they just didn't check all the criteria and they are like applied to a lot of schools which only accepted citizens and green card holders so make sure you check all of that now since i just talked about money it reminded me this entire process is extremely expensive um it is very expensive to be very honest and you like you know let me tell you where where all do you have to uh, have an expense in this process so first of all when you take your toefl you take your inbd and you get your ec evaluation done all of these thing three things like you have to pay for them inbd i think it was around $1200 or a little more than that i honestly don't remember toefl is another probably $200 apart from these two ec evaluation i'm forgetting how much it is but i think i think it was around $200 to $300 then apart from this when you apply through the capit cycle you have to pay for every school that you apply to like there is an application fee $100 $200 $150 $75 i don't even remember it's a lot and then apart from that if you plan to like you know take 
mentorship or uh, any kind of like uh, professional services from someone like a lot of people take they get their uh, CVs edited and stuff like that then there is additional expenditure on that but again that is something that is optional to you you can if you feel that your chances of getting accepted into a school might increase exponentially if you take mentorship from someone or who has already been accepted into a school and who knows the entire pathway and they can you know with like some money they can literally change your life like this because once you get into the degree and once you like you know get your license in this country your life changes for good so then that investment is definitely worth it but apart from that there are some non-negotiable expenses like as i mentioned your inbd exam your toefl your ec evaluation as well as like you know the applications fee for every school so uh, how this application process goes is that capid opens their portal uh, from sometime in March, the date varies every year and from March to you can say probably June, July, the portal is open and whatever you have to apply or whatever you have to do, you have to do between that. So if you miss it, you miss an entire year and then you have to wait for the next year. There are some schools which open their portals late, like in uh, December or in November, something like that. So you have to check it accordingly on the Capit portal. But if you are a dentist from a different country and you just want to pursue uh, dentistry here, you want to be licensed to treat patients in America, in United States of America, this is the pathway that you have to go through. This is an expensive pathway. There is even more than expense. There is a lot of like mental uh, caliber that you need to have and a lot of strength and goodwill and a lot of like uh, you have to have that winner mindset to win this thing and it is very tough but yes it is doable and uh, when I applied to these, school, these schools and I got accepted in NYU it was my first cycle so when I applied I applied in I took my INBD last year in April and then after taking my INBD in April I applied to NYU in May and i took my toefl in april as well and uh, by july i had my kira interview and by august i was accepted so for me the entire process of application and doing everything was just uh, four months but let me be very honest with you that is not the case with most of the people with like i'll say 99.9 percent .9 people who apply to this cycle that is not the case so just because i was able to do it in such less time don't think that everyone can be able to do it if you want to pursue this give it good time and plan things accordingly because when i did it i did it like everything in a rush and i had like just five or six months and i had to make some ma major life decisions so i was like okay I'm, i don't care i'm applying this cycle but if you are currently in your like final year of dental school or third year of dental school or probably second year or you've just graduated you're a fresh graduate or if you are someone who has already been practicing for four or five years and now you want to make the switch to us then make like you know make up your mind think about it give it some time and after having all of those things sorted you can uh, apply to this one more important thing that i would want to tell so for the INBD exam that you take, that is like the major exam that you need to clear in order to be eligible to even apply to a school, that is an exam that you can take only in the US. So if you are in any other part of the world, you have to travel all the way to the US and that is another reason why I say it is very important that you need to have your valid US visa. So I know the process is very complicated, but I did try to make a quick video and I did try to like uh, kind of simplify it for a lot of you who follow me on Instagram and YouTube and I get so many emails and messages from you guys and comments asking me to make a video on what is this entire process and why is it so overwhelming and how do you go about it? So I just hope this video helped you. If you're in the process and if you are like struggling with your SOPs or if you're struggling with your LORs or anything else and if you feel that I can help you out in any way then you can email me this is my email address and I will reach out to you as soon as I can. 
So I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Let me know in the comments if you want me to make a video on anything else. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.